Good morning, Townview, and welcome to the 12th Annual Math and Science Lecture Series. We have quite an incredible program for you today. First, however, let me thank all of you, the students, the faculty, as well as our partners at Mitsubishi America Heavy Industries and for helping to make this year's event possible. This year, we have a very distinguished guest speaker who at the age of 23 became the first black pilot to fly solo around the world and the youngest of his time. In 2007, Barrington Irvin circled the globe in his single-engine aircraft as a solo pilot, breaking seven speed and distant records on his 97-day trip. We're so thrilled to have him here at Townview. We've had him in Washington at my brain trust to share his inspirational story with all of you today. You know, I've been doing this a long time, but it's events like these that truly get me going every morning, thinking of all of the accomplishments that have been made and all that you're going to make. So given last minute changes here in the House of Representatives, I'm unable to join you today in person because the Congress enters debate on one of the most important pieces of legislation that covers the majority of research and development throughout our federal government, the America Competes Act, one that I had to work on for a number of years before we finally got it passed in 2007, and it was reauthorized in 2010. In the House of Representatives, I served in what I consider to be the most important committee in the entire Congress because it speaks to the future of this nation of research and development. I'm ranking member, uh, the, the, the highest Democrat on the House Committee of Science, Space, and Technology. In that capacity, I get to work with some of the smartest and brilliant staff and hear of the, some of the greatest minds in our country throughout the world. And as you know, I tell everyone that really this is the future. This is a committee that has as its theme, without vision, people perish. And that is true. The Science Committee is where we are truly looking to build our future for pushing the limits of human knowledge and understanding in biology, physics, space exploration, medicine, and supercomputing. Math and science have always paved the way to our future. Not too long ago, Texas Instruments, right here in Dallas, created the first microchip, the semiconductor. And let me tell you, it made that company a worldwide company. Dr. John Kilby, a scientist who did become a Nobel laureate, discovered that chip right at Texas Instruments here in our city. It changed the way we think about and interact with the world around us. Now, each of us walks around with tiny computers we call smartphones. You can find directions, text your friends, access the internet, and interact in a digital world whenever and wherever you please. I can talk to China anytime. People from here can call me from wherever I am around the world using that semiconductor chip in that telephone. That really is a mini computer. Decades ago, America focused its education system to train a generation of workers to do the work they needed done at that time. <clears throat> We mostly needed mechanics, factory workers, and the like. It was a time when blue-collar manufacturing was in its heyday in America. Now, however, the times really have changed. Our economy has changed. The world has changed. Businesses work in real time. And we have what is called a global economy. The phone you're holding may have been designed by engineers in the U.S., its case may have been manufactured in China, which then is shipped to Japan to be assembled and then sent to Canada for packaging and ended up on the shelf right here in Texas. These paradigm shifts in the way the world economy works means the type of workforce we need to compete as a country has changed. That's why I wanted to host this event today. I started this math and science lecture series because I want to make sure that the next generation, our future, you, are exposed to the kinds of jobs that are out here now. Pushing these frontiers of human knowledge, 
The new world economy demands more jobs in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. What we refer to as STEM disciplines. We need biologists to develop the cure for cancer, physicists to help us explore outer space, and engineers to develop carbon-free vehicles and faster, smaller, smarter computers. These are the jobs of today, and I want you to at least consider exploring these disciplines, broaden your horizons, and discover new interests in STEM fields. Today, we're going to have a chance to hear from a man who dared to take on the frontier of human possibility. And I hope throughout your lives, you too dare to challenge yourselves in the limits of our knowledge and scientific boundaries. Science and engineering are the future. They are and always have been the key to future progress. And I hope today you will have a spark of fire uh, that would cause you to think about our world in a different way and to imagine yourself someday breaking beyond the limits of today. I thank you for joining me this morning. And without further delay, let's get this program started.